Hello, my name is Nico Tripsevich. I'm with the Archaeological Research Facility at UC Berkeley. Welcome to the Practical Workshop Series. Today I'll be demonstrating how to georeference geophysical data into QGIS 3. In this case, we have a slice map from ground penetrating radar and the slice map, it's 14 meters in one direction. So it doesn't match our site grid precisely. So I'll be showing you how to use the advanced digitizing toolbar in QGIS 3 to lay out um, exactly 14 meters in one direction. And then we'll georeference it and we'll clip the, uh, the radar data to just the data area so that you can mosaic multiple um, radar slice maps together on a single layout. So let's go ahead and get started in QGIS 3. And I've got a site grid already created. And here's, this is what our GPR slice map looks like. You'll note that the north arrow is pointing to the left. So this is north, this east-west direction is 20 meters and the north-south direction is only 14 meters. So we'll georeference this into our project and the northeast corner of our slice map is gonna fall right on the datum in this demonstration. So let's go ahead and uh, think about how we're gonna georeference it. Uh, it's 14 meters north south. So the 14 meter increment doesn't match our 10 meter pre-made grid here. So we're gonna to need to create two points on the south end to georeference to. There are two ways to do this. One is to simply, we're gonna, we're gonna put them, the georeferencing points here in the points uh, shape file layer. And one way to, to create new points is to simply measure from the datum and then using the, the ruler, watch the increments here, just go 14 meters. And there it is very close to 14 meters, there it is. And then click and you get a dot, but that's gonna disappear when you go and get the vertex tool to create a new feature. So you just put your finger on the screen and you can roughly you know, zoom in, so you're pretty precise and then go and get the tool here and, and click right where your finger is. A more accurate and elegant way to do this is to use the advanced digitizing tools. Now, we are in metric coordinate system. We're in UTM 10 North, NAT 83, uh, Epoch 2011. So I can use this advanced digitizing tool set. So I've got it enabled here and I've got snapping turned on, see the magnet. So the way you can do this is to use what's called the what's known as construction mode to, to create the offset. So we want to drop a point that's 14 meters south of the datum here. I'm going to go ahead and enter construction mode. By clicking this, you can also use the C key to toggle it on and off. And I'll click on the datum and I've got the snapping turned on, so it's very easy. And what construction mode does is it is it doesn't really create a point. It's a virtual, it's kind of a virtual space for, for precise measurement that doesn't actually create vertices. And now I'm gonna, I wanna go 14 meters south. So to precisely guide that, if I press the D key, see the D there, uh, and I, I've also got um, these guides turned on right here to these orthogonal angles, 90, 180, et cetera. So if I, if I just kind of drift south along this 180 degree axis and press the D key on my keyboard, it highlights over there on the advanced digitizing pane. And I'm gonna type 14 return. And that's gonna constrain my motion to this circle, 14 meter circle. And I'll just go down south here and click. Oh, well, first I need to come out of construction mode. So I'm gonna press the C key and if you look over in the advanced digitizing, that toggles it on and off. Now it's off and I can click and that's gonna drop a, a vertex and I'll name it Southeast. 
And there it is. So I'll repeat the same thing here. Snapping is on. I don't want to leave a point here, so I'll go into construction mode. And then I'll start moving south, press the D key, 14, return. Go down there, turn off construction mode with the C key, and then click. And this will be southwest. There we go. Next step is to use the georeferencer tool here in the raster menu. We'll open up our raster. It's called Grid A North. And once again, we've got this as our datum point, and it's only 14 meters to this point, south in the southerly direction. So I'll go ahead. This tool is already selected. I'll go ahead and drop my first point here at the edge of my data. And now it wants the corner, it wants the coordinates in UTM space. The easiest way to do that is to choose it from the map canvas. Well, first I'm gonna make sure it's in the same coordinate reference system as the rest of the project. And then I'll click the map canvas and snapping is on. So I just click there and it populates. Okay, the next one is gonna be this one I just created. I'll put it right on the edge of my data. Once again, from Map Canvas, and it's going to be this one. Okay. We're going to go south or west in this case. The edge of my data from Map Canvas, and it'll be this point. And finally, this point goes here. Uh, the next thing to point out is that we have these four points in JPEG coordinate space indicated here, and the UTM coordinates are there. This is still all zeros because we haven't picked our transformation. So I'm going to click the gear up here and you choose your transformations. I'll just go with the defaults. And I'm going to call this mod. I'm going to save a geo tiff. And we have compression options. So I'm going to skip that. I'll go ahead and save it and run it with the arrow. Successful. You can see the once I once I chose my transformation, we get the delta x and delta y. That is the adjustment to between the two coordinate systems, and then the residual provided here, the r squared. So. We're done with the georeferencer. I'm not going to save the ground control points because this was a very simple georeferencing. If, if I was doing something like a, a scanned map into a GIS, I would probably save those because sometimes it's sort of an iterative process where you, you come back into georeferencer and make some adjustments. But in this case, we're done. And there it is. There it is positioned. Uh, go ahead and stop editing this one. The last thing I'd like to demonstrate here is how to clip this GPR slice so that only the data area is showing. What this requires is that we have a polygon that, that delimits the area of interest. So I'll go ahead and start editing our polygon demo layer and snapping is turned on with the magnet. So we can just go ahead and click the four corners. And then Right click, this is grid A. Stop editing. The uh, polygon goes there and let's, let's put this underneath it so we can see it. And uh, now we're going to use the raster extraction clip raster by mask layer. Oh, and oh, first I, I'll select that polygon that I just created. Okay. Got it here. Sure it's selected. Oh, I need to highlight the layer. There we go. And then I'm going to use the raster 
extraction clip raster by mask layer. Input layer is our, our uh, geo-referenced GPR grid slice. And our mask layer is going to be this polys, but just the selected features. And our coordinate reference system is the NAD83. And we're using the same one here. And let's go ahead and run it. The result is a clipped layer that we can see here if we turn off the, the original layer behind it. And this allows you to align multiple grid slices without that collar of, of, of adjacent information obscuring the, the data next to it. Please note that this is a clipped uh, temporary layer. And if you'd like to save this clipped layer, you should right click, go to export, save as, and you can save it here as a GeoTIFF or any number of other formats. Um, but it is just a temporary layer. So it'll, it'll remain in your project if you save your project. But as long as you're on the same computer with those temp files available, it'll, it'll likely reload. But you should make sure that your, your real data, this original here with the caller, and the polygon used to clip it are saved in a, um, in a reliable place because this clip layer is just a, a clip layer. And that's all. Thank you.